As a character, Hoka Tsushimamura has always fascinated me. Her way of thinking, the way she deals with conflict, none of them are like your average run of the mill Yuri protagonist. Today I'll be delving into Hoga Tsushimamura's character and fully explaining her, starting from grade school all the way to where she is right now in the current light novel slash manga. Similar to my Adachi explanation, I'll be starting with childhood and begin moving onwards from that. So we'll start with pre-middle school Shimamura. Around this point, she was 8 years old. Around this time, she had plenty of friends, however, only one really stuck out from the bunch, that being Tatami. Around this point in Shiramura's life, Tatami was one of the only people she could truly consider a friend friend, the only other one being her grandparents' dog, Gon. Shiramura as a child spent a lot of her time at the pool, such was not the case with Tatami though. Tatami as a child was more on the diligent side according to Shiramura, as she was always busy with things at home. The best way to describe Shiramura as a child would be calling her a group leader. She was the one leading while the rest of her friends followed behind her in suit. Her childlike imagination was also extremely diverse. You could find her mentioning fighting aliens in space, or piranhas in jungles, or role playing as sharks or crocodiles, etc. This was how her grade school days were spent. There's not much worth mentioning about her grade school days besides her connection with Tatami and her childlike tendencies. This is when Shimamura's rebellious phase initially begins. Shimamura had no obligation to follow school rules. Whether she wanted to leave an assembly early or not all depended on when she'd reach her mental capacity. I think it's worth mentioning that around this point, I do not think that Shimamura was in the best mental state, at least compared to her classmates. The way Shimamura viewed people as a whole was just depressing to say the least. Even the sight of her classmates or the uniforms they all wore would disgust her. Part of the reason why this was was because of Tatami going to a different school. After her and Tatami went separate ways, Shimamura established an ideology of sorts on how friendships work. To Shimamura, friendships by nature had no guarantee to last. They required a reason, an excuse to exist. Friendly feelings might have been a part of it, but only a part. Shimura believed that relations were temporary. They were in the moment, but when compared to the present, they were meaningless. This whole view of relations has really shaped her character around this point. I feel like after thinking like this for so long, it will become easier to view yourself as a standalone entity, especially when you believe those relationships everyone was establishing around you would never last. I feel like it's safe to say that she hated other people due to this, and she believed that she was hated in return, although we haven't really seen one character in this show that has verbally said that she hated Shimamura, so I think that was just one-sided on her end. It's at this point that Shimamura believes that she's become half of who she is today. In her words, she believed that she became Shima Hogetsu at this point, not Shimamura, but Shima. Although not confirmed, I believe that she becomes Shimamura after meeting Adachi. That is when Shimamura is at her 100% point. During middle school, little to no relations were formed besides some basketball club members. These club members that Shimamura made friends with I guess you could say but not really friends uh, I guess we'll say acquaintances the basketball club member that Shimamura made acquaintances with actually did make some appearances later on I think they made two different appearances in later chapters and she also met this mystery character as the community likes to call her this mystery character was not a friend of Shimamura's the best way to describe her would be an acquaintance However, this person played a very big role in the progression of Shimamura. She showed Shimamura that even when there was no excuse for two people to become kindled, a bond of sorts could still be formed, even when no friendly feelings were involved. That's the main takeaway from her character. After this whole entire chapter, she was never mentioned again, but her short appearance definitely molded Shimamura into who she'd later become. Uh, I feel like it's safe to say that Shimamura took some bits of that mystery character's ideology and reiterated what she already had believed. Also, this mystery character, the reason they're called mystery character is because Shimamura couldn't be bothered to remember her name. She's not entirely mysterious. I feel like her personality is very straightforward. It's not too much mysterious about her. Her name is just unknown, which is why she's known as the mystery character. Upon entering high school, we see subtle amounts of change from Shimamura. This mostly being how she was much more open with the people around her as opposed to how she was in middle school, and her newly found motivation to participate in school activities, mainly being due to Adachi. Shimamura's high school life was already off to a better start than her middle school life. As the story progresses, Shimamura becomes much more willing to talk to her peers, hence the reason why she befriended Hino Nagafuji and later on Sancho, Delos, and Pancho. Although she had Hino and Nagafuji in the start, it was very clear that Shimamura still kept her distance from these two. They certainly wouldn't be her first choices, but they would always be there if all else failed. It was that sort of thing with her. Now when talking about pre-Adachi meeting, this is all that you really can say. Um, she, it didn't take too long for Shimamura and Adachi to meet at all. They met relatively soon after entering high school. 
Around the start of the series, Adachi and Shiramura had a lot of similarities in their personalities, but that is, I would only go as far to say personalities to extents. As people, they have absolutely no similarities whatsoever. Shimamura and Adachi. Adachi, Shimamura has completely different nature than Adachi, I will say that. They also come from different upcomings. They're just not the same. That's what I want to get across. Oh, I see a lot of people say that these characters are very identical. They're not at all. But as we know, Shimamura always tended to keep a fair amount of distance between her and others. And someone like Adachi, who didn't even care for her to begin with, was a perfect match. A girl who always kept her distance and a girl who didn't even care about the other one. That is why I think they got along so well. Neither of them had restrictions to hold up around each other since neither of them cared exceptionally and I think this is what brought them so close. With that, it didn't take that long between her and Adachi to gradually become closer and the distance between them also grew smaller and smaller. It's also worth mentioning that yes, the distance between her and Adachi did grow smaller but it was always there. A good example of this would be a glass wall standing in between two people. The habit Shimamura picked up during middle school would always be there to follow her. The only time that that distance is 100% removed is where we are right now in the light novel, volume 11, and maybe a couple of volumes before this, but the distance didn't really get removed until a little bit after they started going out. Especially after Adachi's breakdown, there was always some distance between them. And also, if you haven't noticed, Shumura and Adachi's relationship initially was fairly similar to a relationship with a mystery girl from the previous section, the girl from Volume 9, Chapter 1. So what separates them? How come Shumura became close with Adachi, but not the other girl? Firstly, incentives played a part. The mystery girl herself did not want to become friends with Shumura. She did not care for Shumura, and Shumura, for the most part, didn't care about her either. That was the type of relationship they had. There was no mutual friendly feelings, none of that. One of them could probably die and the other one probably wouldn't even have too many feelings about it. Why would they? They weren't close after all. The mystery girl viewed these types of relationships as valuable. She enjoyed being able to speak without having to restrict herself around others. It might even be fair to say that she sought for these relationships. This was once again yet another thing that she had passed on to Shimamura. Despite Shimamura's vague memory of her, she considers her interactions with the girl enjoyable meaning that she herself was also a fan of these interactions. The point of this is to say that the relationship Shimura had built with a mysterious girl was solely based on distance, the distance they had between each other. As long as they talked, there was never going to be any friendly feelings. It isn't like they talked for a day or two. They often went home after school together since they um, lived relatively close, and during that time, they bonded not one bit, not at all. That was not the type of relationship they shared. This was not the same with Adachi. Although distance was definitely there, Shimamura at some point had accepted Adachi for who she was and allowed herself to bond with her even if only a little bit, which was something we hadn't seen her do at all prior to high school, except with Tadami when they were both children. The reason for this might really just be Shimamura maturing, or the fact that she possibly had an interest in Adachi from the get-go. Maybe not a romantical interest, but an interest as a person. But honestly, I feel like both could be valid reasons. And as far as Shimamura's high school life, that's really all there is to say. She met Adachi. At first, there was a lot of distance between them. Over time, they grew closer. They started dating. And once again, Shimura reevaluated the way she viewed relationships. And that's really because Adachi is one of the few people in her life that hasn't come and go. Like, if we talk about everyone so far, Tadami, Tadami came and went. The girl from the basketball club came and went. The mystery girl, she came and went. Adachi is the only person that actually stayed by Shimamura throughout the whole entire show without ever leaving. And I feel like that's why Shimamura can see herself with Adachi in 10 years time. And I think that that's just really nice to think about. And that wraps up fully describing Hogetsu Shimamura. For all my viewers that are just as knowledgeable about this series as me, I'm sure you're all aware that I've skipped some information on Shimamura. No, I didn't forget. I'll aim it to include all the important information first, but now I'm going to include all of the things which I didn't include at the start. Starting with middle school Shimamura. One of the things that I skipped was Shimamura's first crush. The reason why this was skipped was because her first crush played little to no role in shaping Shimamura. And if you're curious, her first crush was Chiki from another one of Iruma Hitoma's works, Hatsuko Kisu. Although Chiki makes a very brief appearance, it's very clear to see that she doesn't care too much for Shimamura, likewise with Shimamura towards the girl herself. Although Shimamura never mentions exactly what she liked about the girl, based on what we've seen about middle school Shimamura so far, it's safe to say she was probably attracted to her diversity. 
Cheeky is also fairly similar to the mysterious girl as well in terms of their relationship. Cheeky would come and then go just like everyone else, leaving little to no impact on Shimamura at all. Even calling her a first crush to me seems kind of wrong, especially since Shimamura herself didn't take that crush too serious as she laughed it off shortly after her final meeting with Cheeky. Now, what I'll say is, I'm not entirely sure of what Cheeky's whole point of being in this show was. I don't know if that was just a cameo to promote Iruma Hitoma's new work or not. I'm sure she had some deeper meaning than what I'm seeing, but I just don't understand it. Was she trying to foreshadow Shimamura liking girls or something? I, I don't know. I, I really don't know, I can't tell you, but she didn't morph Shimamura's ideology by any means, which is why I didn't put it in. A lot of this video has been focused on the ideology because that is a big part of who Shimamura is and why she's acted the way that she does to others throughout the whole series. And I'm sure there's more that I'm missing, but truth be told, off the top of my head, I don't remember it. Anyone who knows what I'm missing can put it in the comments. Same with my points. If anything was wrong, incorrect, or you don't agree with it, you can put that in the comments as well. Of course, I'm not going to argue with any of you over that. If that's what y'all want to put in the comments, y'all can put that. My goal here is to further everyone's understanding of Hogetsu Shimamura. It's not to start arguments about what I believe. It's not to start arguments about maybe what Shimamura believed. Anything that further deepens anyone's understanding of the show, my goal is fulfilled. And um, I think I can end the video here. This was a much longer video than my Adachi video. And that's just because there was more to talk about with Shimamura. Shimamura has a full childhood. I, with the utmost respect, Adachi does not have that. She just doesn't. But um, yeah, so I have to say, in my next video, I'm probably going to go over um, maybe Hino or Nagafuji, maybe Tadumi, or I might branch out to different shows. Right now, I'm really satisfied on how my Adachi and Shimamura videos are doing, and I enjoy making them because I love this I love this whole entire story. Um, I think Iruma Hitoma is a mastermind when it comes to writing. Every show he's written has been amazing. Um, Hatsukoi Kisu, if you haven't seen it, I recommend y'all go read that as well. That's also really good, especially if you like Adashima. Um, some characters like Nagafuji and Hino were mentioned in it. Well, um, yeah, all I have to say, and uh, I'll see y'all next time.